come to Psalm 42 and the first we've encountered thus far in these daily devotions that hasn't been written by King David. Who wrote it? Well, the title of the psalm says it was written by the sons of Korah. Who were they? Well, they were Levites. They were a tribe within Israel devoted to the worship of God. And the sons of Korah within that tribe were a very gifted musical family. They not only composed some 11 of the psalms, they played instruments, they sang and led worship. They also led groups of pilgrims to Jerusalem for different festivals. So let me read Psalm 42. This is God's word. As a deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, my God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When can I go and meet with God? My tears have been my food day and night while uh, people say to me all day long, where is your God? These things I remember as I pour out my soul, how I used to go to the house of God under the protection of the mighty one with shouts of joy and praise among the festive throng. Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Saviour and my God. My soul is downcast within me. Therefore, I will remember you from the land of the Jordan, the heights of Hermon, from Mount Mizar. Deep calls to deep in the roar of your waterfalls. All your waves and breakers have swept over me. By day, the Lord directs his love. At night, his song is with me, a prayer to the God of my life. I say to God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? Why must I go about mourning, oppressed by my enemy? by the enemy. My bones suffer mortal agony as my foes taunt me, saying to me all day long, where is your God? Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Saviour and my God. Amen. The author of his psalm is writing about his experience, a difficult time he was going through, one that affected his mental health, in several places he tells us that he was going through bouts of tears, downcast, even disturbed soul, feelings of being abandoned by God and his reaction to people when they criticised and made life difficult for him. He fluctuates between faith and despair, he doubts and he hopes and he doubts again. The psalmist is disclosing to us a very personal battle that's raging within. What's going on? Well. It does seem that the author had an abrupt change of circumstances, a traumatic event that happened. He was forcibly removed from friends, family, home, job, all his familiar surroundings and pattern of life. Uh, he was most likely captured and taken into exile, removed far from Jerusalem. Verse one tells us he was removed to an ungodly nation in the midst of deceitful and wicked men. And there, verse 3 and 9, show us that he became the butt of others' jokes, taunts, uh, people who made fun of him in regard to his faith, his belief in God. 42 verse 3 says, My tears have been my food day and night, while men say to me all day long, Where is your God? And he is missing his previous life, the role he had of taking people to the temple, walking them around, explaining all about it, a bit like a tour guide today. He doesn't have that anymore, and he misses it, and he remembers it. Psalm 42, verse 4, These things I remember as I pour out my soul, how I used to go with the multitude, leading the procession to the house of God with shouts of joy and thanksgiving among the festive throng. But most of all, what he misses is God. For <clears throat> where he is it, right now, he feels God is not. And he longs for God. He says, as the deer pants for the water, so I long for you. I said to God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? I think this psalm speaks <coughs> right into our situation these, in these days of isolation. Now, I know many of us are actually okay at the moment. Uh, the weather so far has been good, at least up to the time of recording this. Uh, there's gardening to be done. We get to spend time with family. But that's not the case for everyone. 
there are people that are self-isolating alone and maybe they've not got a garden and perhaps the future for them uh, perhaps because of age or an underlying health condition feels uncertain and they miss the life they had the friends they mixed with the freedom to go out where they wanted to and when they wanted to go out and they miss too the church they went to and perhaps sitting alone somewhere um, they miss the presence of God that they experienced when within their uh, when within their congregation life has changed for them and it's a little uncertain at the moment if it'll ever go back to the way it was what can we learn from this psalm psalm 42 to help us cope to come through it two things i would suggest to you one how the psalmist during his time of trouble battles with himself and two how he battles with God. Let's take the battle with himself first. Repeated throughout the psalm is this line, why are you downcast, O my soul? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my saviour and my God. What's he doing? He is taking himself in hand. He is not allowing himself to wallow, to flounder in despair. He's telling himself that God is in control and that he's going to come through this. I guess against the force of negative thoughts that are running through his mind, he's bringing to mind the promises of God's word, his hope he is placing in God. So that's what he's doing here. He's taking himself in hand. Let me add to this first point the idea of also allowing other people to talk to yourself as well as you talking to yourself. If you're on your own in isolation, can I suggest that you make the effort, if you haven't already done, to lift the phone and talk to other people. Allow them to encourage you as well. I know I've had a number of phone calls from people who just feel down and alone. And maybe there'll be those watching this who are not on their own can I say to you, be mindful of those who are. Dial their number, just to see if they're okay. However, on the second point, uh, he's not only talking to himself, he's talking to God. Verse six, my soul is downcast within me, therefore I will remember you from the land of Jordan, the heights of Hermon, from Mount Mizar. Like us at the moment, there's not much he can do about returning to church fellowship. Uh, but not being at church is not the same as not being able to fellowship with God because God is everywhere. God is with him. He is with the psalmist. And he realises that perhaps in a moment of clarity. And he begins to remind himself of this promise in verse 8. By day the Lord directs his love. At night his song is with me a prayer to the God of my life. So he's with me by day, he's with me by night, he's the God of my life. And interestingly, the name he uses for God in this verse is the turning point, I think, for the psalmist. It's because this name is different to the rest. It's Jehovah. Jehovah is God of the covenant, the faithful God who cares for his people, the one whose promises stand generation after generation after generation. That's who he's calling on. So he realises that he didn't have to go to Jerusalem to worship him. He could do it right there where he was. And the same applies to us. If you're shut in and cut off, you can too. You can call upon God where you are right now. So if your circumstances have changed, maybe your future feels uncertain, that's where you need to go, to the God who is with you. The God is where you are. So two things I'd say from the psalm. One, talk to yourself. And two, and most importantly, talk to God. We'll do that now as we pray. Loving Heavenly Father, I thank you that your word tells us that there is nowhere that you are not. And so help us, O God, in these times, Lord, to reach out to you 
and claim those promises, those timeless promises of Scripture, that you will never leave us or forsake us. And I pray too as well for those perhaps who are listening to this and know of someone on their own. I pray you'd all, you'd help us to reach out to those who perhaps may be more vulnerable during this period of isolation. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. As the deer pants for the water, so my soul longs after you. You alone are my heart's desire, and I long to worship you. You alone are my strength, my shield. Spirit.